This is where we should start feeling at home. Part of our daily perception of reality is that this disappears from our world. When you go to the toilet, shit disappears. You flush it, of course, rationally, you know, it's there in canalization and so on. But at a certain level of your most elementary experience, it disappears from your world. But the problem is that trash doesn't disappear. I think ecology, the way we approach ecological problematic is maybe the crucial field of ideology today. And I use ideology in the traditional sense of illusory, wrong way of thinking and perceiving reality. Why? Ideology is not simply dreaming about false ideals and so on. Ideology addresses very real problems but it mystifies them. One of the elementary ideological mechanisms, I claim, is what I call the temptation of meaning. When something horrible happens, our spontaneous tendency is to search for a meaning. It must mean something, you know, like AIDS. It was a trauma, then conservatives came and said it's punishment for our sinful ways of life and so on and so on. Even if we interpret the catastrophe as a punishment, it makes it easier in a way, because we know it's not just some terrifying blind force, it has a meaning. It's better, when you are in the middle of a catastrophe, it's better to feel that God punished you than to feel that it just happened. If God punished you, it's still a universe of meaning. And I think that that's where ecology as ideology enters. premise of ecology that the existing world is the best possible world in the sense of it's a balanced world which is disturbed through human hubris. So why do I find this problematic? Because I think that this notion of nature, nature as a harmonious, organic, balanced, reproducing almost living organism, which is then disturbed, perturbed, derailed through human hubris, technological exploitation and so on, is, I think, a secular version of the religious story of the fall. And the answer should be not that there is no fall, that we are part of nature, but on the contrary, that there is no nature. Nature is not a balanced totality which then we humans disturb. Nature is a big series of unimaginable catastrophes. We profit from them. What is our main source of energy today? Oil. What Are we aware what is oil? Oil reserves beneath the earth are material remainders of an unimaginable catastrophe. Are we aware? Because we all know that oil, oil, oil is Oil is composed of the remainders of uh, animal life, uh, 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 plants, and so on and so on. Can you imagine what kind of unthinkable catastrophe had to occur on Earth? So that's good to remember. No, you call this poor on my god. You can have a, a, a half of a hamburger, or rather some cheese sandwich, then you can have a muffin and some juice. Ecology will slowly turn maybe into a new opium of the masses, the way, as we all know, Marx defined religion.
what we expect from religion is a kind of a unquestionable highest authority. It's God's work, so it is, you don't debate it. Today, I claim ecology is more and more taking over this role of a conservative ideology. Whenever there is a new scientific breakthrough, biogenetic development, whatever, it is as if the voice which warns us not to trespass, violate a certain invisible limit, like don't do that, it would be too much. That voice is today more and more the voice of ecology, like don't mess with DNA, don't mess with nature, don't do it. This basic conservative, partly ideological mistrust of change. This is today ecology. Another myth which is popular about ecology, namely spontaneous ideological myth, is the idea that we, Western people in our artificial technological environment, are alienated from immediate natural environs. That we should not forget that we humans are part of the living earth. We should not forget that we are not abstract engineers, theorists who just exploit nature, that we are part of nature, that nature is our unfathomable, impenetrable background. I think that that precisely is the greatest, na uh, the greatest danger. Why? Think about a certain obvious paradox. We all know in what danger we all are. Global warming, possibility of other ecological catastrophes, and so on and so on. But why don't we do anything about it? It is, I think, a nice example of what in psychoanalysis we call uh, disavowal. The logic is that of, I know very well, but I act as if I don't know. For example, precisely, in the case of ecology, I know very well there may be global warming, everything will explode, be destroyed, but after reading a treatise on it, what do I do? I step out, I see, not things that I see now behind me, that's a nice sight for me, I see nice trees, birds singing and so on, and even if I know rationally this all is in danger, I simply do not believe that this can be destroyed. That's the horror of visiting sites of a catastrophe like Chernobyl. You, in a way, we are not evolutionary, we are not wired to even imagine something like that. It's in a way unimaginable. So I think that uh, what we should do to confront properly the threat of ecological catastrophe is not all this new age stuff to break out of this technological manipulative mood and to found our roots in nature, but on the contrary, to cut off even more these roots in nature. alienation from our life world, from our, as it were, spontaneous nature. We should become more artificial. We should develop, I think, a much more terrifying new abstract materialism, a kind of a mathematical universe where there is nothing, there are just formulas, technical forms, and so on. And the difficult thing is to find poetry, spirituality, in this dimension, to recreate, if not beauty, then aesthetic dimension in things like this, in trash itself. That's the true love of the world. Because what is love? Love is not idealization. Every true lover knows that if you really love a woman or a man, that you don't idealize him or her. Love means that you accept a person with all its failures, stupidities, ugly points, and nonetheless, the person is absolute for you. Everything like, uh, that makes life worth living, but you see perfection in imperfection itself, and that's 
how we should learn to love the world. True ecologist loves 